Hey guys, welcome to Homelab Tech Support. Here's the skinny. I need an interface on my PFSense box. Uh, there's one unused, but I need to configure it. So I thought this would be a good time to show you guys how to very quickly and very rudimentally um, configure an interface. So let's go ahead and click this button. Oh, that's not big enough for you. Let's see if we can make this bigger out of studio mode. Let's do play around mode. Wham, bam. Awesome. Okay. So, let's go ahead and clear that out, and, okay, interfaces, assignments, first thing we're going to go to do is we're going to find the physical interface, so, IGB 0 is the WAN, IGB 1 is the LAN, all the interfaces on IGB 1, so we're going to go ahead and use IGB 2, so I'll click on the name OPT, which is uh, stands for optional, and I'll do this for, we'll name this... Yeah. Testy Mick test face. Uh, we'll enable the interface. Let's give it an IP4 and let's scroll down here. What's an IP4 I'm not using? Um, 192.168.55.1. Let's make this a slash 24, which is 24 bits, which is 255.255.255.0. And we'll leave the rest of this blank. Speed and duplex, because this is a physical interface, not a VLAN, we will leave this at default. Uh, it will end up being 1000 base T, but just in case, Salvador. Groovy. So if we go ahead and hit apply to that, if we ping this, if I know what I'm doing, which, you know, sometimes. And let's bring that up here. Ping 192.168. What did I make this? 55.1. Oh, nope, that truly is going to fail. I'm on a VPN. Let me get off my VPN. Yeah, okay, so that ping is failing for two reasons. One, the interface is down. And two, there's no firewall rules on here, although that would still go through. Anyways, uh, let's go to testing McTest face. And it looks like. We already have rules on here. Interesting. I wonder if I've used this uh, interface before. Okay. So let's delete that and let's adjust this rule. You know what? I'm just going to delete it so I can show you guys how to make a new rule on a blank interface. All right. So ignoring the apply and the no rules on this interface, let's go ahead and make our first rule. So I'm going to click on any. Uh, let's do this from test McFace net and truly honestly actually let, let's take a step back here with the protocol being any without filling out any other information doing this creates what's called an any any rule and this is just going to send traffic out uh, this is going to let traffic outbound um, this won't let traffic inbound like if you're on the WAN uh, you're, there's no port forwardings here um, but you'll be able to establish a two-way connection and get to the internet uh, if you were to connect to this interface um, I like to make mine just a little bit um, more robust. So I'm going to do this. So we're going to invert the destination of RFC 1918. So what the heck does that mean? Well, first of all, you have to have created the alias R, uh, RFC 1918. Um, that is just a name. It's a label. It, it While it is in alignment with the actual request for comment uh, spec 1918, which defines the private IP subnets of 192.168, uh, 172, 16 through 32, and uh, 10 dot uh, in their respective uh, subnets. Um, this just basically means anything coming into the interface of testing McTest face from the testing McTest face network, as long as it is not going to a private IP address, which means any other IP address, which is internet IPs, um, we will allow that traffic through. So um, the other part of this is, is that if I did just have this set to any, that means that any traffic coming in this interface could go to any of my other networks. So that could go to my private network, my guest network, that would allow that traffic to go to anywhere. By doing this and setting this as a inverted destination of RFC 1918, it's saying, hey, I'm not gonna allow you anything except internet IP addresses basically at this point. Um, so we'll type in internet for testy net. So the other thing I want to do is I want to allow DNS uh, on my uh, firewall. So because we've said, hey, you can't touch any private IP addresses, well, the IP address of the firewall is still a private IP. 
So let's go ahead and select the UDP. Let's go ahead and select testing net. And let's go ahead and select this firewall self. Uh, nope, I lied. Let's do testy address just to be very specific here. And we're gonna type in uh, DNS and that'll bring us right to port 53. So DNS against firewall. So that's going to allow us to ask the firewall for DNS entries instead of having to go to the internet, which is great. Um, and then I like to, and you do not have to, add a deny all rule. Um, I like to do uh, reject instead of block just so it's active. Uh, from here, reject any um, from any to any uh, deny all else. So the reason that I like to create a deny rule and make sure you put it at the bottom, not the top, because if you put it at the top, nothing below it's gonna work. Because remember, rules are in order from top to bottom. Um, that means anything that tries to go to any other private IP address or private IP net is gonna be logged. If I remember to turn on logging, that's better. Is going to be logged. So I can see if there's something bad in this network that's trying to do scans, I'm gonna see it in those logs and be able to hunt down what that is. And we can also create rule uh, alerts later down the line to actually actively tell us about this. Okay, awesome. So now that I've clicked apply, so what else is missing? Think about it. If I were to plug in this interface right now, what IP address would I get? Think about it. Think about it. I wouldn't, why? Because we have not set up DHCP yet. So we have to go set up DHCP. Here's the rub. If you don't want DHCP, you don't have to. At this point, if you plug into that interface and you try to get traffic out and you set yourself a static IP address, it's gonna work perfectly fine. But if you're expecting to plug in and for your device to be able to get an IP address automatically, that's not gonna happen. So let's go configure that. So what we're gonna do is go to DHCP server and we're going to go to testy McTest face. Perfect, first thing we have to do, click enable. It's already highlighted, so I just hit the space bar and it checks the box. See, space bar, wee. Um, all right, so available address range. Um, this means that in this subnet, we can have these available IP addresses to be used at all. Well, first of all, dot one is already taken up by the firewall. So this is not an active display of available IPs. This is just what can be used in this subnet. So don't just copy and paste this. Um, my preference, and uh, what is usually found in the industry is that you reserve some lower IP addresses for network-based devices, switches, firewall, router, printer, anything that you're gonna set static. Um, my personal preference is that I start at 100 and I stop at 200. Um, in some cases, cases, if I need a larger range, I'll go to 250. Um, I usually don't take the last three because if you're ever doing, um, if I'm paying attention and typing in the right IP address, um, for the same reason that you have statics at the low, I like to set some statics at the high. It's all just personal preference. So now that we've set that at the top, we don't have to click any other check boxes or fill in anything else because if we click the save button, it's going to work. It's that easy. Um, to prove that, I'm gonna click save. Ta-da! So what happens when you don't fill anything out? Well, first of all, the default is to use the IP address of the interface that is the gateway. So that means that this IP address 192.168.55.1, which is the IP address that is assigned to the interface of this firewall, is going to be automatic for here, for here, and that's it. So we're gonna get DNS automatically, we're gonna get our gateway automatically, and we're gonna get an IP address automatically at this point. If you wanna see why I was configuring this in the first place, click this button over here to see the full video of what device I was actually plugging in to diagnose with. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this quick video on configuring an interface. Have a good day. Oh no, wait, stop! Before you go, please click that subscribe button and the like button. Let me know you like what I'm doing here. And that subscribe button and that bell, the, the, the little bell as well, is gonna tell you when I upload new videos like this. If you like what I'm doing, if you don't like what I'm doing, leave a comment, tell me what's going on. There's a lot of things I'm asking you to do. If you only do one of them, click the subscribe button. That's what helps me the most.